Welcome back to my channel. I'm E.G. Stone. Uh, today's video is going to be a Wednesday reads. I have a bit of a cold, so that's why I sound gravelly and I probably look like I've got a few shadows under my eyes. So that would be that. Um, so this week I read a novelette, a fantasy novelette called The Fairy Mule by Chris Lindbeck. And this story was is very much a fairy tale and it wasn't like a fairy tale retelling, this was completely original and I really liked it because it talked about characters or that wouldn't normally show up in a fairy tale. Like um, for example the main character had childhood rheumatism so she was um, her limbs were bent and she couldn't do things that normal people would do so she had to learn how to adapt to that and so she was the heroine of the story which means that um, and, and most fairy tales don't necessarily have cripples or people who have disabilities as the main characters of the story which I really liked and it wasn't just her, it was her companion, her friend as well, uh, who was sort of like a caretaker slash maid slash friend. Um, she had a cat lip and, you know, to have both of the sort of significant characters in the story uh, have the disability. Uh, it was really interesting to read because you don't normally see that. You ever, you always see people who are, you know, pretty but poor or rich and ugly or... Um, you know, very much following the fairy tale stereotypes that you see in the original Brothers Grimm stories and all of the adaptations thereof. So that was really nice. I also liked the fact that the sort of animal companion slash magical element was uh, not your standard magical element. I mean, this was more than just taking a dragon and making it small and squat. This was like, this was taking a fairy horse, which, um, you know, are supposed to be grand and majestic and strong and mating it with a donkey and you get this fairy mule as a result. And mules are very much have their own stereotype of being stubborn and being um, sort of bred for work and they're barren and so they aren't much use besides work and that's what people use them for and so that's a whole different stereotype which was interesting to explore how it could be both one, um, following the stereotype and two, breaking the stereotype by being part fairy and being able to travel across the border into the magical lands, um, Elfland, I think it was called in this one. So I was, I really, I liked the dynamic there and it was, I guess it was interesting to read because I expected maybe a little bit more of, um, I guess, I don't know, discussion about how this affects life, um, how having these disabilities can affect your life and how I, you have to overcome them. And it was definitely there, there and I really, I liked it, but it took a little bit of a background to the situation that um, the characters were put into to go and save this child. And I'm, I'm wondering if that was done on purpose, because if it was, then it makes a very significant statement about the fact that people who have these problems and um, who don't show up as the, at the forefront of society as people that we should, you know, admire or who always get to be the star in the stories, um, that, this, that makes the point that these people are just as capable and just as significant and have the same thoughts and emotions uh, as everybody else except for this one aspect of their life. and. Um, that we should treat them normally and treat them as regular people and still be aware of this and that they can be the star of the story. Um, and if it was not done intentionally, I still think it makes that statement. It's just perhaps secondary to the actual story itself. It reads like a real fairy tale in the style of the Brothers Grimm or a, like bedtime story, that sort of a fairy tale where the details are more left to the imagination of the reader than they are explained in the story and where you sort of know what's going to happen where, okay, the main character is going to have um, a problem that they have to go solve and they're the only ones that can go do it and they go and it overcome adversity in order to... Uh, to complete this problem and that they are um, 
they're going to end up happily ever after. Or at least the people they're working for are going to end up happily ever after and the main character is going to go off to have more adventures. That is a fairly common way for fairy tales to end up unless everybody dies Shakespearean style. Um, so this story definitely followed that almost exactly. The one part that I didn't like about that was the fact that the narrator showed up halfway through the story and I wasn't expecting there to be a narrator because it didn't start off like there was a first person voice to the story saying, oh, this happened to me years ago or someone I knew. It started off very much distant, and very much um, just relaying events. And then halfway through there came this first person discussion of the narrator and the narrator's input on the story and that was a little bit jarring to have halfway through the story. I think it would have been better if it had come at the beginning of the story as opposed to in the middle um, because it sort of woke you up and pulled you out of the story and it felt very strange, I guess. It felt a little strange. So that was that was uh, my sort of main critique for that. Otherwise, the actual challenge that the main character had to face uh, in going to pick a specific herb from this elf land, that didn't start until about, it was the last quarter of the novel, and it felt a little bit rushed. Uh, and I think the first three quarters of the novel were definitely necessary because they explained the situation and what the main character had to overcome and how how she sort of made friends with her um, caretaker slash companion and how she trained the mule and um, all of that was absolutely necessary and very interesting to read. But then to have the main adventure show up so late and to have it so quick felt a little bit like I was being cheated of the main meat of the story, or at least the part that was in the description um, for this book. I think, I think it was still a great read, but I would have liked maybe to stretch that out a little bit or to have it um, interspersed with other uh, challenges that she had to face and other learning about her um, disability and her difficulties. I think putting those together would have perhaps made the pacing a little bit less frenetic. So on the whole, I, I did like this story quite a lot. Um, I think this would have done well as a larger collection that has similar stories in the same world or in different worlds um, or retellings of original fairy tales where the main character had similar problems. I think that would have been very interesting. So it was it was a good read. So I don't know that I loved the story, but I definitely liked it a lot. Uh, I think it made a very poignant statement about how characters um, sort of are stereotyped even when we don't think we're stereotyping them and how people can achieve great things even when you would least expect it of them and also giving um, people with disabilities a chance to have their own story which many do not even in uh, modern fantasy and other I guess other genres where it shows up and so this was sort of addressing that so I really I did like this story I highly recommend it and I would probably give it about four out of five stars. So if you are interested in reading this story and others like it, please go check out all the links in the description to um, Chris Lindbeck's uh, social media and Amazon page. I got this book off of Kindle Unlim Unlimited, so if you have that, do go check it out. Do uh, read it. It's a quick read. It's a good read, and I liked it quite a lot. Um, if you are interested in having your book reviewed, please let me know. I will be doing these Wednesday read videos once a week and um, hopefully next week I will not be sounding quite so dead. So that's all I've got for you this week. I'm going to go drink some tea and probably take a nap for a while. So I will see you next time. Bye.